everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about root operations that are found in the PCS codebook, Procedural Coding System Codebook. I've also made another video that I will have a link down in the description for it that introduces root operations and the first section of root operations that you will find today. We are going to be talking about another section of root operations. Now these are described as root operations that alter the diameter or route of a body part or involve a device. These can be kind of fun. So the first root operation or the objective of the procedure, follow that link to that first video that talks about finding the objective of the procedure. Keep in mind, I will be emphasizing that throughout all of these root operation videos. So the first one is restriction, partially closing an orifice or the lumen of a tubular body part. So with restriction, the objective is to not fully close off the tubular body part, but to make it smaller, to make the diameter smaller, so not as much fluid or gases can move through it. Some examples of restriction would be an intraluminal clamp to temporarily close a portion of the thoracic aorta. Intraluminal meaning on the inside of the tube to narrow that diameter so blood flow can't move as quickly or as much fluid to move through that tubular body part. The next root operation is occlusion, completely closing an orifice or the lumen of a tubular body part. This one is similar to the restriction root operation, but this one is to completely close it off. We're not just narrowing the diameter, we are closing it off completely so nothing can flow through. Some examples of this is tubal ligation of a fallopian tube. So if the word ligation comes up in the op report, you can read through and make sure that the ligation or the occlusion or the fully closing off of the tubular body part is the objective of the procedure. If it is, ligation means occlusion. And then you can also find this for tying off hemorrhoids, and you can go online and Google all about hemorrhoids to learn more about that. Next root operation is dilation, expanding an orifice or lumen of a tubular body part. This one is the complete opposite of restriction and occlusion. Instead of narrowing or completely closing a tubular body part, we are opening it, making it wider, increasing the diameter of the tubular body part. So with dilation, some of the devices used in dilation would be like the insertion of a stent. When you see the word stent come up in the op report, and if the stent is the main objective of the procedure, they aren't doing anything else in the procedure, just inserting the stent, know that that is dilation. The stent is going inside the tubular body part to open it up to allow more flow of fluids or gases. You can also find dilation in the percutaneous transluminal coronary angiogram or PTCA. Google that to get more information on that entire process but it is basically used to open up a blocked coronary artery. So if that is the main objective of the procedure, to open up a blocked coronary artery, or they say PTCA, that's the only thing that they're doing, know that the root operation or objective of the procedure is dilation. And then our next root operation is bypass, altering the route or passage of the contents of the tubular body part. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Almost all of the op reports that I have read in my practice books clearly say bypass in the procedure title, and when you read through the op report, the objective of the procedure is bypass. It's pretty self-explanatory. But some examples. There are coronary artery bypasses where you are literally changing the route of the coronary arteries. Super simple. I'm also going to do a video on building the codes for a coronary artery bypass because they can be pretty, pretty complicated. Sometimes they use multiple coronary arteries and just in general doing a video on bypass since they can be quite confusing and the op reports are very, very long. 
Another example of bypass is the excess cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, from the brain and the spinal cord rerouted to the peritoneum or in the abdomen. So if the op report says they are rerouting the CSF from either the brain or spinal cord down into the abdomen and they don't say the word bypass, no, that is a bypass. Next root operation, insertion, putting in a non-biological device that monitors, assists, performs, or prevents a physiological function, but does not physically take the place of the body part. This one is very, very important to remember that the device is only helping the body part function normally. It is not completely taking the place of the body part. I will also add a link in the description for a video where I go through the process of coding a procedure that has insertion as the objective of the procedure. And in that example, and I will talk about it here, the insertion of a pacemaker. The pacemaker does not take place of the heart and the functioning of the heart. It just assists in maintaining the rhythm and pulse of the heartbeat. That's all it does. The heart does not get removed and the pacemaker just hangs out there. It just helps, meaning you are inserting the device. You can also find the root operation insertion for vascular access device or bone growth stimulators. I suggest going online and looking at both of those to see what those procedures look like. Oh, and insertion is only used for devices. Just remember that. Next root operation, removal. Taking out or off a device from a body part. So this one, if you have a device that is implanted or inserted into your body, we need to have a code for if you get it removed. So removal is our root operation that we need to use. So if you have a pacemaker and you need it removed because you don't need it anymore, removal is the root operation we will use. You can also find removal of internal fixation devices. Those are most commonly used in on the spinal cord or an infusion pump from a spinal canal. Go online, check that out and see what that procedure looks like. Our next root operation is revision. Correcting to the extent possible a portion of a malfunctioning device or position of a displaced device. So since we have the insertion and removal of a device into the body, we also need to have a code for what if there's a malfunctioning part of the device that needs to be replaced. We need a code for that. So with this root operation, specifically for a part of a device, if the entire device is being removed and replaced with a new one, there is a different root operation for that. But if, let's say with a pacemaker, you just need to change one of the leads or one of the leads moved to, you know, moved off its correct location, it moved somewhere else. Then you would use revision if the surgeon had to come in, replace the lead or move the lead back to the correct spot it should be in. Then we have the root operation, change. Taking out or off a device from a body part and putting back an identical or similar device in or on the same body part without cutting or puncturing the skin or mucous membrane. This root operation is only for devices that are externally placed. This does not cover completely replacing a pacemaker or a fixation device or any device that is implanted or inserted inside the body. It's only for external devices. If the surgeon has to use a knife to cut the skin open or whatever external membrane open, then you cannot use the change root operation. So some examples of external devices that would be used with a root operation change would be drainage devices like a chest or Foley catheter. Those already have artificially made openings for the tubes or the catheters to come out. So you don't actually have to cut the skin to take it out and put in a new one. So change is an appropriate root operation if they need to change components of that catheter. Our next root operation is replacement. 
putting in or on a biological or synthetic material that physically takes the place and or function for all or a portion of a body part. So this one, like I said before, with one of the previous root operations for insertion, the device is being inserted or implanted to take the place of the entire body part don't use insertion, use replacement. So some examples of a replacement root operation is a total hip replacement. You will see a lot of these with prosthetics because the prosthesis is taking the place of the joint or bone. And finally, our very last root operation in this section is supplement putting in or on a biological or synthetic material that physically reinforces and or augments the function of a portion of a body part. This one can be a little tricky and a little controversial. And as you start coding and researching, either through the forums on the Health Information Management Association's website that you are affiliated with, you can find different questions that are posed about should this procedure be listed as supplement or something else. It is common to have this sort of issue, so don't worry if you are unsure. But with supplement, a really good example is if the procedure is a hernia repair and they use a mesh. The mesh is there to support and reinforce the hernia so it does not move, it does not get displaced, etc. The only reason they inserted and implanted the mesh is to reinforce that hernia. So when you look through the op report, if they are inserting a mesh or something that looks to be supplementing or augmenting a body part, know that you should use supplement and not insertion, nothing like that. Supplement is very specific. So those are all the root operations for this section. I will again have more videos on other sections of root operation, so keep an eye out for that. Don't forget to look at the two links of the two other videos that I will have on the actual process of PCS coding using the book and building your code, and also the video that discusses the first section of root operations and gives some more information about why PCS uses root operations and how it differs from other procedural coding systems. So I hope you enjoyed that. Keep watching. You can subscribe to my channel if you want updates on any new videos. Comment if you like. I would love to hear what you have to say. And I will see you all later. Bye!